Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Uh, the first of what we hope will be many valuable webinars hosted by our incredible team. My name is Mufuz Chaudhry. I'm the brand manager at Candy Box Marketing, and we have a real treat for you today. In less than one week, this webinar registration hit max capacity. You know, it filled with business owners and marketing professionals, which if anything is a real indicator of the need for unconventional marketing tactics during these challenging times. Uh, today, our speaker will be sharing trends that are happening in the market and many practical steps that you can use to pivot in your industry. If you have any questions for myself or the speaker, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of this webinar. My encouragement is to really be selfish with your questions. Make sure that you get the most during your time in this webinar today. Now, to introduce our guest speaker, someone that I've had the honor of working with for almost nine years now. I've had the opportunity to watch Daryl Kieser, the CEO of Candy Box Marketing, build the business from the ground floor into one of Canada's fastest growing companies. He's the author of two published books, 37 Ways Your Website Died and Pick Up Your Freaking Phone. And he, spe he speaks in over 50 events per year around North America to share the latest on digital marketing. So we really have the best of the best here. Now, yesterday, Daryl and me, uh, me were speaking about the webinar, and he told me that he wants to spend most of the time during Q&A as much as possible and answering questions that really matter to you. And the reality is we just know that we won't have time to answer every single question here. So what was really cool is that Daryl has offered to open up his calendar for a one-on-one -on -one call with every single person that's on this webinar today. And I asked Daryl if he knew that this meant that he would be taking more than 500 calls by the end of the webinar. And he looked at me and he said, yes, yes, I do. So what I'm going to do here in our Zoom call today is I'm going to paste a link in this chat message that's going to allow you to very quickly click directly into Daryl's calendar. And in this exclusive link, you can book time directly with his calendar and he will contact you and he'll give you a full audit of your website, your digital marketing, and provide some personal recommendations that you could use to improve your business in your industry. So very specific recommendations. Now the calendar time slots, time slots are on a first come first serve basis. So I implore you to do this as soon as possible. Now that's enough for me. Let's get this show started. Daryl Kieser, how are you doing? Uh, well, my hair is not as great as, uh, as the picture up there. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got COVID hair going on here, but uh, thanks for the intro, Mafuz. Uh, really appreciate everybody coming out today. And uh, what I wanted to do was start off with a slide um, that I presented last year. And this slide uh, was, uh, you know, I, I presented this at our conference called the State of Digital in 2020. And I uh, did this in November. We had a great time. We had a huge conference. We had all of our clients out and we talked about all the plans and all the things that were happening uh, in 2020 over the next bit. Um, you know, I even have a picture of me speaking at that conference. Look at how happy I am there. I mean, like I've got, I've got a haircut. Um, we've got everybody sitting in the audience, uh, not social distancing, uh, drinking out of bottles of water without sanitizing them first. And uh, you know, that, th those, were, those were exciting times. Like that was, that was pretty cool. And, uh, and so, but this is, you know, November, 2019 uh, BC, right, uh, before COVID. And, uh, and, and since then, obviously everything has changed. Uh, the worst thing that we can do as company owners and marketing managers is hold on to what has happened and just really pay attention to what's going on right now and to kind of just pivot our marketing. So the purpose of this presentation today uh, is not just to like sell software or do anything like that, is just to show you um, the industry trends, what's going out on the marketplace. We want to show you some stories of some cool stuff that we've seen and some opportunities for you guys to take advantage of. Um, now, um, like like most of us, uh, taking a look at the the screen here, um, you know we we've all had to recalibrate because of a single bat uh, about four weeks ago. And uh, when we take a look at all the changes in the market, I was actually just listening to the BDC this morning. And uh, one week ago, they said that in Q4, so in the fourth quarter of this year, that Canada was going to uh, kind of rebound, have an 11% gain. One week later, uh, BDC and they're a research company, right? Um, they, they said, you know what, we're no longer providing that number because there's no data that can help us right now present an accurate depiction of the rest of the year. So as business owners, what does this mean? It means that a lot of us are asking questions that we don't know the answers to in the next couple months. And that's okay, but we have to still answer the question of 
what are we doing right now? Uh, what are we doing with our marketing? How are we pivoting uh, what we're seeing within the digital space? Uh, because right now, consumer habits are changing, markets are changing, and uh, you know, I, I think the best uh, term that I've heard of, a lot of people say not unprecedented times because that's just annoying by this point, right? We're in unprecedented times. You're, you're not here to hear that, but we're on a roller coaster. So it means that we're seeing highs, we're seeing lows, okay? So stuff that's really, really working and stuff that's not working um, whatsoever. So uh, just a, a funny story. I was speaking to uh, a co colleague the other day about an Amazon store and this, uh, this one uh, manufacturer selling a number of different products. And uh, it, it includes uh, baby wipes. So it's all baby stuff, right? Uh, baby wipes, uh, breast pumps, et cetera. And one of the thing was, uh, was nipple cream, uh, but it was uh, antibacterial nipple cream. And that has been you know, record sales because people are using it for anything because anything antibacterial is now selling and everything else wasn't. And so very strange business model uh, if you kind of think about it, but the reality is we got to recalibrate and sell what's actually working. Um, this is, you know, a lot of us this year, uh, 2020, I actually did say this, that 2020 was going to be the best year of my life. Uh, and then, you know, that happened. And so when this stuff happens, we have to just think, okay, this, this hurts pretty badly, uh, but how are we going forward? You know, a lot of us, when we saw 2020 from like years ago, like how is life going to be in 2020? Um, you know, we, we thought of, you know, flying cars and a lot of really cool stuff. And, and, and the reality is this isn't, this isn't very exciting, right? Having, police uh, standing in front of toilet paper. Like this is not really what we saw coming. Uh, and so unless we have one of these, um, we really just have to make a plan for what this looks like. And that's why we, we prepared this uh, webinar quickly for digital marketing during a crisis. And uh, what we specifically wanted to talk about is in a crisis mode, um, a lot of people go through very strange things. And so I'm not sure if, if you've ever been in like a car accident or, uh, or if you've seen like, you, you know, something in your house light on fire. Um, everybody has different reactions. So some people will like run screaming out the door and pushing everybody uh, away. Other people are like the first responders and they're grabbing, uh, you know, the fire extinguisher. Other people are thinking a little bit ahead and they're calling 911, right? Uh, calling 911 seems like a logical option, but it always drops out of people's minds. And the reason why it, you know, everybody reacts differently is just that we're, we're built differently. And, uh, and although we know, you know, the guy screaming running out of the door is the wrong answer, at the time, it just seemed like the right answer. And so we can't really use intuition when we're looking at marketing because sometimes our intuition is telling us the exact opposite of what needs to happen. Uh, you've always heard that there's you know, two reactions to any crisis, it's fight or flight, but there's actually one more that psychologists talk about and that, that third one is freeze. And we've seen a ton of companies do that as well, too, where everything is just falling apart and they're just not making any decisions. And, you know, not making a decision is a decision to let somebody else make that decision for you. So you may decide, OK, well, I'm just not going to change any of my marketing or any of my expenses or, you know, do anything. And, and very quickly, somebody will make a decision that, that you've just gone bankrupt. And so we need to pivot during this time. And uh, we're going to focus uh, a lot uh, today on what those pivots look like, what are opportunities. And uh, we've also got the privilege today of uh, speaking to two company owners uh, that you've seen in the bio, uh, the, the uh, information that just went out before the webinar. Uh, so we've got the CEO of Smart Nora and, uh, and a business owner, uh, Warner Lomper from uh, Domino's Pizza, to represent both you know, what they've done recently on the bricks and mortar side and on the e-commerce side to pivot. So um, our agenda today is we're gonna go through, first I'm just gonna go through stats and we have to pay attention to stats before tactics because we have to understand what are we responding to. I also know that uh, not every trend is gonna apply to your industry. And so I'm not gonna try to get way too industry specific today, but we have to see what are the major sweeping changes that we need to pay attention to. Uh, second thing we're going to take a look at is tactics, so things that you can actually implement today, uh, including getting free money, uh, which is pretty cool. And then the last thing, uh, Tales of Triumph. Why does it say Tales of Triumph? Well, it started with the letters uh, T and it just sounded better than, uh, oh, you know what, we could have said testimonies. Yeah, we should have said testimonies. But anyways, it's not testimonies. I picked Tales of Triumph uh, and we're going to talk to uh, business owners about what they're doing. Uh, at the end, we're also going to have some time uh, for Q&A. 
me just quickly grab my clock here to make sure we're on time. Um, so when we're taking a look at COVID-19 trends, I want to start off in, in just saying that there's been a lot of very strange comparisons of COVID-19 to other world events. Um, uh, recently, I heard uh, somebody say that this is a 100-year event, not, not meaning that this is going to last for 100 years, thank God, but that something like this happens on the earth every 100 years, like it is a catastrophic event. And although people at the beginning uh, there's a lot of people saying, well, this, you know, we're going to be back to normal. Um, this is not going to be the case, right? There's going to be a new normal uh, that we're going to be speaking about later on. And it's really important to, uh, to figure out how to actually navigate these things. And so online ordering, uh, digital marketing, e-commerce, stuff that may have been trending, you know, up for 10 years, all of a sudden just got supercharged. Um, you know, packages are being delivered. People are afraid of grocery stores. Uh, I was talking to my dad the other day. My dad is uh, is 72. He's a baby boomer. And uh, and I was just talking to him and he said, you know what, we've, we've never gone through anything like this. And, uh, and I said, dad, what do you think about this in comparison to World War II? Not that my dad was around World War II. He's not that old, but his father was. And he, he said something really interesting. He said, you know, in World War II, people weren't afraid to go to the movie theater. People weren't afraid of, of people on the sidewalk. And they weren't afraid of like touching fruits and vegetables. And although we, we, we never want to compare two things because that, that almost immediately says that this is equal, um, these are very strange times and we've got to think about what pivots uh, that, we would, uh, that we need to take. So here's the biggest one that we've seen right now. Mobile, so the use of a mobile device is down by 25%. Okay, this is because of number one, uh, people are not commuting all day. So uh, podcasting apparently has has gone down. Uh, audiobooks has been up and down. Uh, but we've been seeing people are not going through their normal routine, right? They get into the car, they turn on their map, they're ordering coffee, uh, they're getting directions, they're they're using their mobile device a lot. Now, we have we have very little to do. And now this is not for every single person. You may find personally that if you're working from home and you're, you're using it a little bit more, obviously gaming is up, uh, streaming is up, but that may be on a TV. But overall, if we take a look at mobile, it's down by 25% since mid-March and continues to dip. Now, when people are at home, um, we have to also understand and say, well, should we pull back from mobile marketing if people are using their phones less? Um, and the answer is no. Uh, right now, uh, in regards to your, your competition, so everybody out there advertising online, right now, 49% of, company, of companies that are out there have stopped online marketing. So half. So if we do those numbers, there is 25% less people on their mobile device seeing ads, but then your competition has depleted by half. Think about this like an auction. Okay, so whenever you go doing pay per click online ads, all that stuff, it's in a live environment, right? The price per click is determined based on the people that are viewing the ads and the number of people willing to pay for that click. So even though the number of people viewing the ads have gone down, the number of people willing to pay for that click has depleted more. So this actually means that we can get a better cost per click on most keywords. Now, this also depends on your business. If you're saying, well, if I'm bidding on the keyword, but I'm closed, that doesn't seem logical. Yes, I, I completely agree with you, right? Like if your business has no ability to operate, no ability to even set up future orders, uh, which we're gonna talk about today, then, then clearly you know, you're, you're, you're potentially wasting money here. But when we're taking a look at the competitive lands, landscape, people are bidding less and less. And so our cost per acquisition is so much better. I saw this meme this morning. Uh, by the way, my coping mechanism is memes. And so uh, remember going places? Yeah, that was awesome. Now with all of our consumers at home, uh, another strange stat that has popped up is that, you know, if we think about shopping in 2009, right, it, it could have looked like this, you know, looking through a catalog or magazine or something. Uh, then when we were all out in mobile using our phones, uh, shopping in 2019 could have looked like this. Um, but now shopping in 2020, uh, looks a little bit like this. And so people are actually multi-tabbing more using, like we're using our phones less in general because we're not working and commuting, but we're actually engaging a lot more with shopping online, which is a, a very strange trend. Now at home, we, we all know that our phones, you know, our phones right here 
our one device, but we have multi devices at our house. And so what that means is that we have desktop um, is actually only down by 7%. So desktop only being down by 7% means that you know, half of advertisers are also advertising on desktop that they were a couple weeks ago, but this has only gone down by 7%. So we're seeing the cost per click on desktop advertising uh, go way down. I just noticed right now that this lady uh, on the screen here is looking at her desktop of pictures of mobile phones. So I hope this is not too confusing. I, I should have chose a different picture for this one. But definitely, um, if you think about your, uh, your bid structure, if you're bidding on uh, different uh, devices and saying, well, uh, before it was 20% desktop and 80% mobile, you may want to adjust that right now because desktop is winning a little bit more than mobile. I mean, we're, our stat is the same as 2015 for desktop usage, which is you know, quite different. Um, if we take a look at remarketing, uh, remarketing is absolutely crucial right now. If you've got a digital marketing campaign and you are not utilizing and activating the remarketing uh, section of that campaign, you're losing out. And the reason why is that consumer behaviors are changing. We are actually taking longer to convert. So uh, for example, we're gonna be speaking about uh, Smart Nora today, and I'm not, I'm not giving away the answer here, uh, but here's, here's a couple of assumptions. A couple weeks ago, sorry, a couple weeks ago, more than a month ago, you know, before the apocalypse, um, if I were searching for like an anti-snoring device, I came across Smart Nora. I thought, wow, this is, you know, the most brilliant uh, innovation um, since the computer, and this is the most amazing thing ever. I click shipping, checkout, credit card, done. I'm done. But right now, I, I have the luxury of time. And so I'm not just looking at Smart Nora, I'm looking at all the other you know, uh, reviews that are out there, all the other products. I'm watching YouTube videos on it. I'm seeing what other people are saying about it. I'm looking on discount sites to see if there's a coupon out there for Smart Nora. Um, I'm multi-tabbing. I've got all this time to search. I don't have kids programs. I don't have you know, a drama class for my kids. I don't have swimming. I don't have my own pottery classes. I can't believe I just admitted to doing pottery in front of everybody, but that's true. Like I have nothing to do. Um, and so with nothing to do, we actually have more time to search, which means that we actually have to have like a longer tail on our campaign. So if, if I'm taking a look at Smart Nora today, um, we don't want to just focus on, okay, if they didn't decide now, let's just leave them alone. We want to continue to market them through the display network to remind them about this. And even if we, we bring this into 60 or 90 days, right now, you see on my second point here, people have less disposable income right now in Canada. We've seen that the uh, unemployment rate, I think it right now is above 14%. We're gonna see what it is in April, at the end of April. We may hit record highs of 20 to 25% unemployment rate. So people may not be willing to buy the product right now, but they'll be very willing in 60 days when they know that they're getting paid. And so by activating remarketing, um, if we see the stats here, past buyers, if somebody is searching for your product and we are remarketing to them, they have a 12% conversion rate. Okay, 12%. That is the highest across any other areas here. Also, shopping cart abandoners. So people that put that into a shopping cart and leave. Uh, if we do display advertising and shopping advertising, yeah, 3 to 4% is great. But for, uh, for the search, for the remarketing, is 8.92%. Right, almost a 10% conversion rate, which is incredible for e-commerce. So if you have a digital marketing campaign and you are not engaging remarketing, you're losing out big time. Uh, the last thing you can see on my slide here is deals. Okay, deals, deals, deals. Uh, at the beginning, everybody was shocked with COVID-19. Everybody just kind of hunkered down and didn't think about anything. Now people are thinking, well, I can save money on my insurance. And so they call their insurance company. I can save money on uh, on phone and internet. And so they've been through a couple of weeks of just having all this time contacting all these, these vendors. They're now getting used to having deals. And so, um, I, and now hear what I'm, uh, I'm saying and not what I'm say not saying, do not have a COVID-19 special. That is the worst thing you can do for your brand. It looks like you're literally trying to capitalize off of what's going on, but simply have a deal for April have a deal on what's going on. And you, people will even be sympathetic if the, the product isn't being shipped for 30, 60, 90 days because of delays. People understand this, right? Amazon packages right now. I ordered a Bodum the other day. It's going to take 90 days. Like it would take me, it would take me six hours to like 
you know, walk to like uh, the grocery store that is like miles away, go shopping and come back. Like this is, this is crazy what's been happening. So we've got to think about our brand equity along this and don't come off too gimmicky. Um, now there's also been a huge change in, uh, in search traffic and ad traffic since the beginning of March due to COVID-19. So Google search is down 20%. Now, once again, use this in context of the fact that 50, only 50% 50 of businesses are still advertising. Uh, so it is cheaper to get onto Google search. It is still a great time on Google search. It's just that the overall volume has gone down. Uh, shopping has been down 15% uh, for ad revenue because people are, are concerned about getting uh, products delivered. Uh, Bing search 5%, uh, search partners down four, but take a look at this on the right. Google Display Network, which is all the ads you see all, you know, all around the internet, is up 13%, and YouTube ads are up 21%. Uh, and that's, that's actually like people clicking on ad traffic. So if you're out there advertising, think, you know, you can think about monetizing either one of these, because on the right-hand side, you've got more eyeballs taking a look at brands. On the left-hand side, you've got a couple areas that, you know, they are struggling for, or there's less traffic, but there's a lot less competitors. Um, this is another big one that you may have not even thought about uh, with your search campaigns. Um, we have to think about physically, people are living in different cities. Okay. Um, before, if we take a look at, um, you know, the, where, where we're advertising, let's just say if we're doing like b B2B advertising of advertising to, uh, to different businesses. And uh, if we're actually advertising uh, in these different cities, let's call it Toronto, because we're in Toronto for the downtown core, we can actually just, you know, geographically draw a line around the downtown core because people during the workday are searching right there. Um, this is a map of actually, sorry, let me find Toronto here. Toronto's right here. Uh, I'm going to annotate this with a little uh, mouse format here. So um, we can see here uh, th this bottom uh, graph here. This is the GTA. Look at how great I am at drawing. Um, and so the red area here shows that internet traffic is going down and the green area shows internet traffic is going up. So this is our downtown core. And I'm not even sure what this is, but this is something right here. Okay, so these areas have gone down. So if you focus your ads here, all of a sudden your cost per acquisition goes way up. Uh, somebody said the airport. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. So apparently airport traffic has gone down. That makes perfect sense. Thomas Watson for the win. I appreciate it. Um, and then all these other areas, the entire GTA where people actually live, it's up. So if you are basing your advertising on geography, you need to change the actual limits uh, in there so that you are targeting those people. Even if your B2B uh, service is for Toronto, you have to think that somebody may be looking, I'm not, I'm, I'm thinking like, uh, if you're looking for like commercial cleaning, like you're cleaning restaurants in downtown Toronto, the person that it may be searching for that could be in Vaughan right now. So we've got to actually change uh, where we, we are targeting. Uh, we see different cities here, right? Here's New York City, right? And here's like every single place other than New York City is, has gone up here. Uh, DC, Houston, Chicago, um, all these things have, have changed dramatically. And so we've got to actually look at um, adjusting the bid price. All right, perfect. Let me get on to the next thing here. Sorry, I'm clearing my annotation. Next slide, perfect. Um, social media usage. Yes, this is almost disgusting, okay? Facebook and Instagram have gone up by 50%, 50 percent, five zero percent. All right, so um, as this has gone up, that means that uh, the cost per click has gone down. Snapchat has gone up by 50% usage. Twitch has gone up by 10%. Uh, LinkedIn decided not to publish their stats right now. So I have no idea uh, if they're up or down. What does this mean for your brand? If you have a social media channel that's actually existing, it means that there's more eyeballs here and a cheaper cost per acquisition if this is the route in which you get new customers. Even if you're getting to get customers after the zombie apocalypse, um, you need to think about lead generation campaigns while people are thinking of other things. Um, I'm almost uh, wondering right now uh, what the habits are gonna be after this because people are almost becoming even more addicted um, to, uh, to social media during this time. And it's not like when this lets up, everybody's gonna go back to their old habits. It takes three weeks to make a habit. And right now we're either using social media more, um, buying too many things on Amazon or drinking a bit too much. And so like these things are gonna continue after pandemic. It's not just gonna stop at one point. So, you know, watch your alcohol consumption and social, social media usage. 
Now, who's seeing an increase? Um, I'd love to talk about every industry, but that would take me three hours. So I'm gonna give you a couple highlights of stuff that is not obvious. Yes, I understand, medical supplies, they have seen an increase, okay? They cannot keep the products on their, uh, on the, uh, their shelves, and that makes uh, perfect sense. Yes, Amazon is up, Walmart is up, grocery stores are up, those are obvious. What are things that we don't know about? I wanna talk about them. First one, can anyone guess? Wow, somebody already guessed it. Are you seeing my next slide? Finance. Oh, wait, my next slide, I'm sorry. My next slide is a quote, so you're wrong. Um, you're wrong, Ryan. Uh, Canada is on the digital tipping point. Um, in the future, we'll remember that there was a way of buying before COVID-19 and after. Every Canadian business, uh, business's e-commerce maturity is being tested and pushed to its limits to the extent we've never seen before. So the stuff we're seeing right now um, is gonna continue actually after this event because there are consumer habits that are changing that will always change. I'm even thinking about the, uh, the grocery delivery that I'm not gonna fully talk about right now, but a lot of people have done grocery delivery out of a necessity, but now that they've tried it, it's probably gonna be a very popular service afterwards. So it doesn't matter pandemic or no pandemic, people are gonna say that was awesome. All right, number one, finance. Uh, so yes, you were right, Ryan. Uh, finance, and on the left-hand side, uh, this is the percentage increase of searches online. So people are looking for finance information, uh, financial advisors, uh, mortgage advisors, insurance advisors, more than they were last year by 23%. Um, as the market has gone up and down, you may say, well, these are just people that are looking to find their own company. So it, it's, it's not a net new lead. That's not what we're seeing. What we're seeing is that as the markets have um, gone through this volatile market, people have all of a sudden taken a look at their finances and either they're happy and they're staying or they're not happy and they're changing. So in every single recession, there is more movement with people switching financial companies because they're not happy with the type of service that they received during a most difficult time. So if you're in financial uh, advising, selling stocks, all that stuff, even though the market to plummet it is a fantastic time to get new customers. On the right, 30% uh, up in accounting for very similar reasons, right? We need to actually see, are people uh, responding to what we're doing? This is up by about 30%. Business management, uh, this includes stuff like um, IT services, uh, security. I saw Matthew Gray on here earlier uh, talking about his business, uh, uh, Mind, Mindshare, Mindspace, Mindshare. No, I forget what your company name is. That's terrible. Uh, Mind Surface. There we go. Um, and so people are, are looking for help um, with all their IT stuff. Um, uh, we see that remote CFOs or CMOs, business managers, CEOs for hire, um, software to help manage your business, manage transitions. Um, this has gone up by 23% with search, but 170, 107% on conversion. So if you are doing B2B lead generation sales to help businesses, um, some people are pulling back. I was speaking to a CEO uh, the other day that was pulling back on this. And I was like, no, you know what? Double down on this because this is the time that everybody examines who all their vendors are and they are actually making changes. Uh, charities. This is a wonderful stat. Okay, Charities are up by 10% with searches, but 23% in conversions, which is incredible that people are thinking of others during times like this. Uh, and if I can just encourage everyone right now, food banks, they need your money. Okay, so after this uh, webinar, if you're not sure where to give money right now, food banks are being absolutely hammered with tons of people uh, that need food desperately today. I could go into that for a long time, but uh, this is really great news that people are looking at charities more. Last one is on-demand media. Uh, so not just Netflix, but things like online learning platforms. Uh, people are taking all this additional time. They're learning anything from you know how to program in full stack development to how to play guitar, how to be fit, all that stuff. Um, E-commerce ready companies are winning just in general. The more digitally mature sectors, clothing, furniture, and home decor, for example, are growing 90% in Q1. We have no idea what's gonna happen in Q2, all right? So uh, right now, e-commerce sales have doubled, and, uh, and this is, it's, it's crazy. Now, I'm not just saying these companies are doing really well, right? So if you think of Old Navy, online sales may have been 10% of their revenues. Now it's 20, but then the other 80% that they had in store are gone. And so although they are losing, they're winning in this small e-commerce area. Uh, and just like that, uh, your online store is very important. 
Uh, I, sorry, I cope through memes, guys. You just can't have to put up with me. Um, not, but I would say some people uh, a week or two ago saying, well, by the time that this is all over, uh, e-commerce may not be priority. We have to start focusing on what's called the new normal. All right, and New York is already talking about it, uh, political leaders across the world. We are not just gonna all of a sudden flood back into conferences and restaurants, and we're not gonna be flooding back to schools and all that stuff anytime soon. And so there's gonna be a new normal of how people buy products. And we're gonna see, even, even if we were to say, you can come back to our store, customers may still feel uncomfortable until the end of this year. Right? Purchase habits that happened during the war continued after the war for a long time just because people got used to stuff. So it's actually not too late to do e-commerce. Uh, a really quick plug uh, for uh, one of our companies, Launch48. Launch48 is a uh, sister company to Candybox. We do websites in two days. We've been flooded with requests of people just needing websites up quickly to change their business online. Um, if you need help, uh, it's not always two days for e-commerce. It could be three days, four days. Uh, last year, we did a project for the Royal Winter Fair that was 30 days long. If you need really quick, rapid help, uh, feel free to reach out to us at the end of this, and we can help launch e-commerce sites very quickly in an agile format with your team. Um, now, those are some winners. I am going to uh, take a look at some losers, all right? So right now, you know, I love this meme, if, if 2020 was a car, uh, right now, travel and tourism, down, bars and restaurants, live entertainment, conferences, sports and fitness, asterisks, industrial, share and gig economy. It's been hilarious that like for a number of years, I've been talking about Airbnb and Uber as disruptors, and they may go bankrupt because of all this. Uh, that aside, um, we have to take a look at these and not just saying, if you're in these industries, you're screwed, but how do we pivot out of these areas into different business models? Um, you know what, right now, your competitors have stopped their ads, and so you can cut your, your, cut your cost per acquisition, your CPA, meaning what is the cost to try to get a new customer. Uh, some customers are seeing up to 80% is gone just because competitors just stopped. And so you kind of liken it, I, I, as you can see, I'm a Tom Hanks fan, love Forrest Gump. You know, everybody, every single ship got wrecked, his was fine. And then all of a sudden he got all the shrimp, right? Now is the time to kind of get out there and get all the shrimp. If all of your competitors have stopped, you find a solution. Um, this is one of our customers that we love working with, Walk at Home. We've, we've worked with these guys for a decade now and they're incredible, but they did their business years ago from selling DVDs of indoor workouts to streaming it on YouTube. And right now I can't give you their numbers, but they are gaining like thousands and thousands of subscribers every single day because they had pivoted their model to do organic indoor workouts. No paid ads, just focused on people wa uh, walking indoors uh, to try to lose weight and stay healthy. And here we go. Um, tactics for COVID-19, how it feels like waking up every morning in 2020. Um, I want to go over some really cool tactics uh, that you can use in your business if it's available. I know not every business is the same. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to go through a couple of these and uh, with a couple interviews as well too along the way. So first thing we need to think about, pivot, all right? We got to change uh, and it's awkward and it sucks. And um, there may be things that, that don't work, but we've got to pivot. Uh, we've got to create a new plan. If you've got a playbook for 2020, put it aside and think, what do we do in the economy where people are afraid to drive and touch things? We've got to change everything. Um, first thing we need to do is over communicate. Uh, one quick comment that I got through here, uh, just as I was reading the, the chatter uh, in regards to the gig economy is not fully dead, but the workers are. You're right, Jason, um, a lot of the workers have been hurt during this time. Uh, and so we're just seeing if the business models can kind of survive because the workers are also uh, their equity, right? So you're right, they may actually survive this, they probably will. Uh, but right now, obviously they're, they're getting hurt pretty badly. Um, first thing we gotta do within our tactics, over communicate, okay? Communicate, communicate, communicate really, really well. Uh, and that means anything, that means email. Uh, I got this from uh, a clothing provider uh, that I subscribe to and they literally had to close their manufacturing and their online ordering, but they told everybody and they were just very clear about it. And they weren't like trying to like hide behind uh, saying, well, you know, orders are just taking longer. They were very transparent the entire time and they marked their opening. Uh, doing stuff through video, which I'm going to talk about later, doing stuff on social media, direct messaging, text messaging, phone. Um, some companies are afraid to talk to their customers and saying, well, what if they cancel or, well, you know, uh, what if they are, um, this looks bad on us. Here's the thing. We know that the world sucks right now. 
every single person uh, is, is pretty sympathetic about uh, what's happening with businesses right now, but we're not sympathetic if you don't actually communicate to your customer. Okay. So communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, some, uh, I heard somebody the other day say, well, I don't want to send out another COVID-19 email blast. You know, what's worse than sending that one extra blast is the customer arriving to your, to your location because they thought you were open. All right. That's the worst. And they're thinking, well, that's a terrible job in communication. So uh, hit send on those couple extra emails, make videos, make phone calls, do whatever you can do to let people know what's going on. Um, remote video project. So, I mean, this is the current late show that's happening right now. All right. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, um, all those guys are just doing stuff from home. It's the new normal. So low budget production videos just to get out there in front of your customers. Doesn't matter if you're just in your home office, they're fine. This is, this is the late show. Okay. So if, if this is like the highest bar out there, you can come close to it pretty easily. And just after this, um, we're going to give you some video best practices. So example, this is a shot of video we did on uh, iPhone 6S at 1080p, 30 frames per second. And after this webinar, uh, when we send out an email to all you wonderful attendees, we're going to give you access to a video. So you have to follow me. You're watching a video of me telling me that I'm telling you that I'm going to send you a video of a video that shows you how to make videos to send that video to your customers. That's right. Did you catch that? We're going to give you all the best practices in, in a video so you can uh, uh, film on your phone. If you need extra help, our agency is here. We're actually doing remote video projects right now where we're on Zoom coaching you through everything and talking about it as you're going through it. And we can produce it afterwards and fix the sound and you know do intros and outros, et cetera. So um, other communication principles to think about during this time, really important. Um, number one, be transparent. It's okay. Um, every single person's at home. You actually should be at home. So it is. It looks worse on you if you look like you're at the office. Okay. So don't don't try to fake anything. Be transparent. Uh, people are very forgiving. Uh, number two, be clear. Uh, tell them what are the new rules of engagement. Are you open? Are you closed? Can they call? What are your hours? Uh, what can they expect? Even if you're shipping stuff, I know a lot of people are nervous and saying, you know what, we're not even sure when we can get these shipments out. Tell them that we are not sure when we can get these shipments out. Tell them what problems you're encountering. Um, as a Canadian, uh, every single time I've been talking to people on the phone where they've been going through a challenging time, I've been very sympathetic and saying, yes, I know the world is insane right now. Of course you can't get my bodum to me in 90 days. Like I get it, um, but they don't get it if you're not clear. All right. Uh, number three, stand out. Uh, you want to stand out for your customers and do something a little bit extra. Now is a great time to do something a little bit extra for your customer to show that you really care. Uh, Christine Nielsen says, it looks like I'm in the office right now. No, Christine, that is just my Zoom background. I'm in a bedroom. I'm surrounded by four kids that are outside the door. So if you hear background noise, I'm not going to apologize. Um, number four, really important, uh, focus on the long term. Okay, focus on the long term of what your company wants to do. This will come to an end at some point and business will continue. And so think about the customer equity and the brand equity that you can be building right now to help you in the future. Um, in regards to search engine strategies, uh, there's a number of different things you can do. Uh, number one, you can find new opportunities as your competitors have just exited uh, Google search, find out what they were bidding on and actually get into those keywords because it's actually cheaper. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there as, as uh, campaigns go on pause. This needs to be managed on a regular basis. At Candybox, half of our staff, we've got eight people full time just looking at keyword prices and this is changing on a regular basis. So think of it like an auction and, and interact with it, uh, or sorry, respond to it to find those opportunities. Uh, number two, push remarketing. We've already talked about this because people may not be willing to buy today. Uh, number three, gather emails. If you can't do it today, you'll want to do it when we're back. And so I saw this the other day. This is a woman's Westward water boot something. No, I'm, I'm not a, a size six woman's, but um, I saw this as an example advertisement the other day and it was out of stock. And so it said, just enter your email address below and we'll let you know when it becomes available. That's awesome. Can we all do that with our businesses saying we're closed now, but leave your email and we will let you know as soon as our doors are open. Uh, number four, uh, promote discounts. Once again, not COVID-19 discounts, just give them saying, Hey, during these troubling times, 
here's 20% off the, uh, and it's our gift to you. That's awesome. Um, also, you can uh, uh, go to Google My Business. This is another tactic. And just make sure that stuff like your business hours are updated, uh, that you have actually have a post about COVID-19 in your profile update in Google My Business, and, uh, and that you actually have all the information about your hours of operation there, because you don't want people arriving if saying they're open and you're actually closed. So put everything up on your My Business account. Uh, we'll also send uh, uh, this link out afterwards that gives you access to this page where you can click through and find out how to change all your hours. Okay, uh, free money. Uh, Google is going to be offering $340 million in Google ad credits uh, for existing advertising customers. So if you're an existing customer of Google ads and you're looking to actually, you know, make a, a, a bit of movement when we're coming back and spend some money, um, Google's gonna be releasing this. Our team is gonna be monitoring the, the, the progress and the update of these uh, credits. They haven't uh, released them yet. And so these are things that are gonna be coming around. Uh, but speaking about all that and speaking about like a pure digital online strategy, I wanted to uh, quickly uh, introduce uh, my friend Beirus, who is the CEO of Smart Nora. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out uh, Smart Nora, it is a non-invasive, non-contact uh, snoring prevention system. I, I hope I get all these words right. Uh, he started off at Kickstarter, has got a crazy, awesome story. Um, but right now, uh, like his product is being helped or is helping tens of thousands of people um, across North America stop snoring. So anyways, uh, Bruce, thanks so much for uh, joining me today. Awesome. Um, let me just see here. Perfect. Right. There we go. Perfect. Well, yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. So yeah, great presentation, Daryl. Uh, interesting to see how the numbers are shifting. So for us, it's very interesting because we have been uh, selling our product direct to consumers for three years, mostly okay. Facebook advertising. Okay, great. And um, uh, uh, just for the, I, I know I kind of gave the quick 10 to 20 second intro, but uh, explain just a little bit about the, uh, the genesis of your, your product. Sure. So this is Nora, and this is one piece of the product. Uh, you kind of see in, the, in this slide, uh, there's a second piece that goes into your pillow. So what, what we do is it's actually inspired by how people deal with each other's snoring. Um, so we have a microphone and a kind of onboard detection algorithm here. Uh, we listen for early sounds of snoring. And before it gets loud enough to wake up a partner, we very gently move your pillow up and down. That takes about a full minute. So it's very slow, but that does the trick of opening up the airway by uh, stimulating the muscles that support your airway. So your airway goes to normal, you breathe normally and snoring goes down. So uh, Oprah cool. says, you will love smart Nora if you sleep with a snorer. <laughs> well, if Oprah says it, then it's, that is good. So how, has, uh, how did COVID-19 impact your business um, over the last couple of weeks? So we definitely have seen uh, a panic week, I would say, initially when, and uh, I guess for context, we right now uh, market in Canada and US, but most of our sales is in US. So we definitely saw a panic week when the news cycle was all about uh, stock market losses and uh, especially what was happening, uh, starting to happen in New York. Um, so we, I think we saw cost of advertising go up. And I think that's, yep. that was before other advertisers had reacted. Um, yeah. And now we are seeing kind of, it's slowly coming back up. So we are getting to our pre, uh, like we're getting to our, um, I guess, um, cost of advertising per unit that we had late February slowly getting there. Volume is low, but at least we see kind of a dip and a comeback. So the question will be for us, how will the news cycle uh, uh, you know, evolve as we go forward? Will there be a lot more emergencies, a lot more kind of, um, uh, kind of scary and intimidating news that will make people take more pause? And we are seeing, like you said, we are seeing longer term to uh, convert. Um, and awesome. one thing maybe I will add in terms of messaging that we've seen, um, we have definitely been transparent with people in terms of shipping times are longer. And we, in usual, in normal times, people always benchmark you against Amazon. Like, hey, Amazon can do it in 48 hours. Why can't you? We are getting less of that because people are understanding of the circumstance. So definitely being transparent on that part. Uh, we have seen no friction there. 
Uh, we did uh, try, so our typical content, the way we introduce the product is always inspired by the biggest uh, kind of uh, points we hear from our customers in the testimonials, which is about, we are back in the same bedroom after many years. We have more energy and better mood. And some of them, for example, the specific things like now we can travel because we can afford to book one hotel room instead of two, we couldn't do it before because it would be annoying to travel together. Uh, so I, our content has always been inspired by those benefits in our advertising. Uh, we did awesome. try to highlight a bit of, for example, how sleep, well, it really directly improves your immune system as well. Like uh, sleep deprivation is definitely one of the leading causes of uh, a weaker immune system. Uh, but it didn't necessarily, uh, I think, land well uh, because I assume it comes up as a little bit of a tangent for people. While it's true, it's not the real, real kind of pain point or it's not an immediate pain point. So we kind of went back to our tried and true messaging and that has kept working. So it was an interesting experience for us. That's awesome. And so what, what have you found like the thing that uh, if you can kind of go back and speak to uh, Baruch pre-COVID, uh, what is the one thing piece of advice that you would have given within your digital marketing? Uh, test, 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 and see what works. So we have always uh, looked back at uh, combinations of graphics and text that has worked well. Or if you have a new message, we look at graphics that have worked well before and see what is it that we can bring forward that we know as a first impression uh, grabs people's attention. So the way sometimes we think about it for first impression, we say, what should I show in the first second so that somebody's willing to watch the next five seconds of the video. And what should be shown that five seconds so they're willing to watch the next 15 seconds of the video and so on, right? So those oh, early yeah. kind of impressions really count. And we try to test a lot and it's usually counterintuitive. Uh, yeah. You find the logic about it after, oh, this is working because uh, yeah. of the comments people leave or the way they are reacting or how your traffic is flowing. Awesome, awesome, that's really helpful to know. Uh, Bruce, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, uh, just Google Smart Nora. Uh, really do appreciate it. I know you guys are, are super busy and uh, what a fun product. My wife the other day told me that I snore. I, I, I told her that she was wrong because I've never heard it. And so I may have to check out your e-commerce store uh, very thank soon. <laughs> Great to speak Great. to you. Great. Thanks so much, Bruce. Awesome. Uh, next, I'm uh, going to go into social media plan. And... Um, in regards to your social media plan and what you want to do is uh, first off, we've been telling a lot of our clients uh, and the work that we've been doing on social media is have a sympathetic tone. Uh, don't just go out there advertising like you were before, like whatever plan you had before, um, you know, take a look at just scrapping or redoing all the messaging in there. We've had to do that ourselves because if you're not sympathetic, the, the fact that your customers are going through a hard time and you're coming across uh, like, nothing has actually changed in their life, they may not emotionally connect with it. Uh, second thing is connect emotionally with your customer. And so when, when even in dealing with the challenges, um, you know, don't, don't be too robotic and say like, you know, shipping dates are 30 to 45 days. Uh, you know, use words that can connect with them uh, emotionally. We are sorry uh, that, you know, uh, shipments are delayed because of COVID-19. We appreciate your frustration in, you know, in receiving our product on time. And so just going through and connecting with their emotion uh, can make them connect more with you and your product. Um, in regards to like actually doing a social media plan, which uh, gets into my next uh, segment talking about Domino's, you don't want to just tell people what you're doing. You want to show them what you're doing. Uh, people are actually freaked out about packages arriving at their door or going to pick up a part from, you know, their, their local hardware store. And so instead of just saying, here's our protocol and letter from the president, actually show them what you're doing uh, to put their concerns at ease. And uh, obviously within social media, uh, resist hard selling. Uh, right now, people are losing jobs. Uh, people are losing loved ones. Uh, people are sick and they're inside and, and they are having troubles. Uh, so now is not the time to push uh, you know, hard sales or time-based sales or anything like that. Uh, we've got to be really sympathetic to the current marketplace. And um, lastly, I, I always say in any plan, be human. Um, humans get angry at companies. Uh, hu humans don't get as angry at other humans. So if there's somebody on the line just saying, hey, 
um, you know, we're late, but here's the reason. And, you know, it's really hard right now. And this is what we're doing to kind of compensate. Um, people will actually respond in a great way. But if you sound too corporate, it's, uh, it's not going to come across very well. And you may not get the response that you want. Um, so I love, uh, before I do my next introduction, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And uh, Warner Lomker is, um, is a franchise, uh, franchisee owner of 11 stores, uh, so 11 domino stores around the GTA. Uh, he's always building, uh, getting new stores, you know, opening up stuff. He's always moving and shaking, which has been, been awesome. Um, and then, you know, uh, 2020 has really um, kicked him in the face, uh, punched him in the face, whatever that quote was. And uh, I also want to say, uh, just as he comes online here, uh, that Warner is also, this is 100% true, he is currently right now holding the title for the world's fastest pizza maker. And so Warner, uh, welcome. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about your business. I think I just unmuted you. Um, how's it going? And I, I, I wanted uh, you to explain to people, what does world's fastest pizza maker mean? Uh, <laughs> well, that means that we, you can make three perfect pizzas faster than any of the other 300,000 Domino's pizza employees in and do it in front of 5,000 people making a ton of noise. Wow, that's incredible. That is just so amazing. I've seen some of the videos, so that's, uh, it's pretty cool. And I, I like how you put, you put the phrase three perfect pizzas, not just three pizzas in general. Like they, they have to be like Domino's quality standard. Absolutely, uh, judging and everyone gets put on a scale and then under a microscope, under a microscope, to uh, make sure it meets all the standards of weight and positioning of toppings, et cetera. They got to fit the screen. That's so awesome. It's a fun challenge. Yeah. So, so tell me, um, in regards to the uh, restaurant uh, pizza delivery industry, uh, how did COVID-19 impact you guys over this last month? For sure. So I think it's pretty much goes without saying that people are staying in more now, um, which means that we have less activity, less, uh, reason for an occasion for pizza, believe it or not. Uh, they're taking a ton of precautions. And so traffic has, has dipped somewhat. Um, but I, when I say that, I just want to mention that we definitely are privileged to be open um, and just doing our part to serve our community as best as possible. But there's been a little bit of a dip. And uh, just the customer expectations have definitely got to be um, heightened, let's say. Um, so you know, what we started doing even two, three weeks ago, just to change our business and the experience, it's now the normal and expected uh, way of doing business in a bricks and mortar shop. Yeah, got it. And so uh, what did you guys do? Because like you, you kind of see this happening day after day where sales just kind of keep going down and down um, and you've got people that you're employing and stuff. So what is the thing that you've done during this time as a bricks and mortar uh, place? You know, you can't deliver a pizza digitally. Um, how, do, how have you um, changed your marketing or your messaging to help what, uh, you know, help people get pizza? Yeah, well, when it comes to marketing messaging, I think one of the first things we were doing, I, you saw a little snippet of a Facebook video. Um, we're really just trying to work on educating uh, our customers on how we can perform the transaction in a way that is um, that is going to alleviate any uh, concerns about coming into direct contact with with our staff um, and also minimizing just the the transfer of or unnecessary exchanges so really we obviously need to exchange the product um, but we're reducing the exchange of cash and receipts and pens and all sorts of things that we can eliminate. So the messaging has been around, hey, we have this, you can feel confident because we're taking these precautions back of house and we're taking these precautions at the time of exchange. Got it. And, uh, and like I've seen the videos where you've just literally walked through what a delivery looks like and you setting up like a sanitary table and everything. Uh, what has been the response from your customers to what you've been doing? Well, the response has been, it's been great. And I think that just having a pizza come to your home or be able to enjoy the pizza experience uh, is a little bit of sense of normalcy in these crazy times. So the response has been, has been great. And I think that, you know, Domino's is a strong brand. We obviously work hard at always having, you know, the highest of standards, uh, but it's been nice for the customers to be able to um, have that, that moment of sameness or, 
even that, that break from what can seem to be the days that blur into each other. Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. Warner, uh, I wish I had more time. We've got a couple minutes left here. So thanks so much for your time. I really do appreciate you logging on today. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, just the last slide here, and I'm going to give you guys an offer and uh, an access uh, to a couple of different things. So last thing I want to mention here is having a website plan, best practices, having top banners on every page, not just uh, home pages to make sure that people know that you're open, um, having multiple methods of contact, phone, chat, uh, or you know, this is our contact uh, information here, uh, online chat and chat bots. Uh, that stuff works really well in a digital environment just to make sure that you're really, really clear. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm going to skip this slide about uh, chatbots. And so, uh, you know, really sum it up today, guys, there's a lot of different things that you can do to kind of pivot your business uh, to move forward. Uh, what we're offering everybody uh, on this webinar is afterwards, you're going to get an email uh, with access to that video to describe making videos afterwards. Uh, you're going to get a link to this recording. Uh, and also you're going to get a link uh, to this, which I think is also in the chat function right now, uh, which is a free 30 minute uh, phone call with myself. Uh, yes, I know I just opened up my, uh, my calendar to 500 people. I did the math and it would take me a month and a half to do a half an hour call with everybody if I didn't eat lunch or go to the bathroom. So um, feel free to, to click that sooner than later if you want an earlier appointment. And I'd love to, to jump on a call to discuss your business, your digital marketing, even if you're working with another agency and you wanted um, uh, you know, a bit of a discussion of what you're doing or if you're a new business looking to start out during this time, feel free to book a time in my calendar and we can jump on a call. Um, other than that, I know we are uh, right on the hour here. And so uh, I just wanna uh, let people go that need to get going, but I'm gonna open up for questions anyway. So if you wanna stay around for, for some Q and A, uh, feel free uh, to stay on for the next five or 10 minutes. Uh, everybody else, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And uh, Mafuz, I'll invite you back to kind of bring me the top questions that uh, I think maybe need to be answered right now. Okay, perfect. Daryl, thank you so much. There was tons of value in that presentation. And for all of you in chat that are flooding the chat messages right now, make sure you give Daryl some love for all the value as well as the special guests that gave their input. I think there was a lot of great stuff that was being shared. And, you know, the number one question was obviously about whether or not the replay will be available. And that's 100% yes, we are recording this webinar and it will be available shortly after the presentation ends. Um, I know we only have time for a few questions, so I do encourage that if your question doesn't get asked, go into that link that Daryl shared in his slide, as well as the link that I put uh, in the chat box to book some time with them. You know, one-on-one -on -one time, all about your question, all about your business. There's just a lot of value there. What I did during the presentation, Daryl, is I grouped a few of the questions that I felt like was the FAQs, like the ones that people were asking commonly. So I'm going to try to answer a lot of questions um, with a few, like a few group questions that I send your way. Uh, the Perfect. first one, and I think this was probably the most commonly asked question, was about a lot of businesses right now that have either paused the services or have slowed down and took a big hit. So one particular question was asking that if today the industry took a big hit and they're not providing services, what can they do right now with digital marketing and what should their strategy be focused on if not direct sales and conversions? Yeah, so I think, um, once again, I know this is a blanket answer of it, it depends, but it, it does. Um, if you've got, uh, if you have the ability to gather information now to sell to clients later, so let's uh, say that like you're closed for the summer, but you're opening up in the fall, putting out a fall campaign and communication, uh, right now the cost per acquisition may be a bit lower, but that also depends on the cash, right? Do you have cash to advertise during uncertain times? Um, if you are going to do anything, have a communication plan in place where uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. Let's say if you, you're a private school and, uh, and you're taking registrations for next year, but this year is, it has not been good. Have verbiage in place there where it's like, if, you know, if we're not going back to school, this is our plan. Here's our refund policy. Here's our return policy. Not return. You're not returning children, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Um, create like a, a single landing page of gathering future orders um, if you can, and just say, hey, sign up here, either it's email, buy it now, you know, fill out, the, uh, fill out a form and have a response mechanism in place there to kind of capture those future orders. Um, in regards to like, just stop advertising all the time, there's a little bit of a cash flow uh, question there. It's like, if you're not getting any revenues, can you afford to be spending money out there? Uh, that's, that's a question you kind of need to answer and see, you know, maybe you, you bring it back. But for some businesses right now, 
um, the, the cost per acquisition is so much lower that they're, they're able to charge, right? Um, we're working with firms right now in legal, in mortgages, uh, that it's like we're, we're crushing it. We're doing really, really well out there in the marketplace because everybody has stopped advertising. So even if they think that the business is closed, it's not really closed. Like this is, this is Candy Box Studio here. Uh, we are technically closed, you know, like this is like where I am physically right now. Okay. That's very glamorous. Um, but the reality is that we're still open, right? We're, we're, we're working virtually. So that's what we let all of our clients know. And March was our busiest year of Candy Box history. Yeah, that's insane. And uh, you're absolutely right to say it. it really depends because the industries have different scenarios that they need to pivot into, right? And different opportunities they need to take advantage of. Uh, the next one I wanted to really highlight, because I think this was asked a few times, was specifically around nonprofits. There's a lot of individuals in this, in this video right now um, that have asked for assistance in how they can create uh, there was one specific question that said that their ads actually got rejected. So maybe you can touch a little bit on like the uh, requirements around launching an ad and what's being rejected. But from a nonprofit standpoint, yeah. you gave the food banks a shout out. What should they be doing right now to get some more awareness built around their campaigns? So we've got to uh, avoid any verbiage around COVID-19. So if you have COVID-19 in your ads, uh, then, then they can get rejected really quickly. So keep the message around pandemic or crisis. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure pandemic is not allowed, but uh, crisis is, is one thing that you are allowed to say uh, or in an emergency. And so use that type of verbiage and it probably won't be rejected. Um, if it is still being rejected, obviously the Google support team can help. Uh, we do a lot of advertising on behalf of charities. So we have a fully managed service. Of, of course, it's an additional cost to, you know, just going directly, but we've got, um, you know, we're professional in the charity, charitable space within online ads. Uh, and like, you know, getting the $10,000 grants, getting stuff uh, pushed through and kind of know the best practices. Uh, otherwise, if you're just doing, you got a trial and error, but avoid any terminology that is about COVID-19 or could be seen as content about the, uh, the current pandemic because they're just rejecting all of those ads right now. Fantastic. And I'll ask one more uh, just to kind of piggyback off some of the things that you're saying. Uh, there's a question around social media messaging and what kind of messages are working. So I grouped a few questions here. One of them was about what kind of social media posts are working best for businesses. And then the yeah. second one is how do we change our messaging so we don't offend anyone? And I think you touched on that a little bit by talking about being symp sympathetic with their voice. But what are yeah. your thoughts in terms of messaging that's working? Yeah, for, for messaging that working, I, I would say straightforward and uh, like, like I, I did have a slide on that. So that may have been pre that slide, but uh, just being honest, transparent and clear of that. The fact that like people may say, well, this is an ad, but how do I know that this ad is still valid because of COVID-19? So you can say stuff where it's like, I saw something today on Instagram showing individually packaged goods of like, like no contact food delivery. So that's like for now. And I, I feel like that's for now, but if they just had this, like, you know, order your meals from us and well, is this safe? Is this not safe? Uh, and so we have to like really make sure that um, they're aware that we're aware um, of the current pandemic in, in the language and that the offering to them matches with, um, with what they're going through. And so that's pretty good. Also don't capitalize off of stuff. Uh, don't just use the terms, uh, you know, flippantly. We've got to be very sensitive with the terms and make sure we're not coming off as, uh, as too much of a hard sale. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you know, just to share a few thoughts as well. I think that we're currently in a situation where the world is more empathetic than they've ever been. Like truly everyone understands the scenario of the challenging times as well as needing to work from home or shutting down your business. Um, I don't think this is a good time to use social media to push out your sales messages, rather more about your care for the community, right? What you're trying to do to assist other people around your community, um, how you're helping your company, your team members, okay. your employees, how you're doing your part in social distancing. I think it's all about being, as Daryl said, transparent. Um, I think being authentic and real is also a big part of the messaging that should be going out in your social media right now. Yeah, uh, with exactly. that being said, I wanted to uh, wrap up the webinar right now because I didn't want to go too much over time, but I appreciate all the great questions that are coming in, all the fantastic feedbacks, tons of mentions on social media that they all will be checking out after. But please, I highly encourage and implore you to go into that link and book time with Daryl. I think if I was in your shoes and I didn't get my questions answered or I wanted to dive in a bit deeper to the things that I've heard in this webinar, I'd be spending some time talking to the guy that delivered the presentation. So 
thank you for your time. And Daryl, any final thoughts from your side? Uh, no, I just, uh, I'm laughing at all the comments about uh, me being in the studio. Like I, I've just been very clear that I've been in my, uh, my wine cellar this, this entire time. And, uh, and we've just been camped out here in the wine cellar. So uh, other than that, guys, thanks so much for coming out today. Um, be in touch. And uh, yeah, we'll do this again soon. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.